your speech so much. I guess we got to have a give one myself. Uh, good evening, Toastmasters. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome, guests. There's a scripture in the Bible that says, it's the little foxes that spoil the vine. What this means is that it's not always those big, gigantic problems that will pull you down. But sometimes it's the little insignificant things that we let slide by and go unnoticed and untouched. The things that we often coddle instead of casting off. They look so innocent. I had a dream once about this little kitty that was in my front door. And my immediate reaction was to shoo it away. But the longer I looked at it, I said, oh, it's so cute. <laughs> so I let it in. <laughs> but this was a mistake, because this little kitty was going to grow up and cause me problems Whoa. that I really didn't want to be bothered with, that were going to also cause me inconvenience. I want to talk to you today about those little, little foxes that try to spoil my life and some things you can consider to rid yourself if you have a problem like this. My goal, if this has ever been a problem to you, is to help you to be set free from the negative mindset of self-pity. Self-pity is a state of self-absorption of your problems and troubles. It sees no hope. It offers no solution. It pets you and it rubs you. And yes, it'll whisper in your ear and say, just lay back. Let life take over. There's nothing you can do. It will wrap you and isolate you in your issues. Because who understands anyway? Now, before you think I'm being a bit too hard, I've been a person that has faced self-pity most of my life. But I've only realized that it was an enemy in the last few years. I did not understand that like those foxes, self-pity was robbing my garden of life, causing me to be blind to opportunities and solutions that, have made, that may have been available otherwise. Yes, we all have moments of despair and disappointment. And sometimes we do feel like there's no way out. But do we stay there? Or maybe once in a while, a long while, hopefully, you can stay in bed, pull a cover up over your head, but know that you have to get up. You can't stay there. It's a dead zone. And it's not a good idea to take a sabbatical because you feel sorry for yourself. I saw a movie some months ago called Unbroken. And it was a story about the life of an Olympian runner named Louis Zamperini. He went into the service during World War II, and because of a series of circumstances, he ended up being captured by the Japanese. During his stay as a prisoner of war, the sergeant of the unit that he was in, the Japanese sergeant, was also an Olympic runner that he actually competed against, but Louis had won. This sergeant was so filled with rage and jealousy that he caused Louis to endure terrible hardships and great suffering. But it seemed as though the more he put him through, the more he just bounced back and was resilient. He just would not quit. Clearly, this was not a man that spent a lot of time entertaining self-pity. Maddie Stepanek was a boy that was born with a rare genetic disease, but he wanted people to know his philosophy on life, to play after every storm. This brings me to three actions that I have used to stay out of self-pity. Number one, dance. Motivational speaker Tony Robbins teaches that energized movement can change your state of mind. When we dance, 
exercise, or even jump up and down, we release endorphins. Endorphins are like opiates in the brain. There's a quote by an unknown author that says, life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass, but it's about learning to dance in the rain. There's also a song by Lee Womack which says, when you get a chance to sit it out or dance, I hope you dance. Dance like nobody's watching. I have always been a person who loved to dance. After I got sick, I was afraid to dance anymore. I said, I just can't. But after I thought about it, I can dance. I can dance like nobody's watching. I can get out of my bed and dance. I can dance just because. Dance is an expression of the soul, so I will dance. Number two, discover who you are. We all hear voices, but it doesn't mean you're schizophrenic. Mm -hmm. There are voices of self-doubt, of accusation, of fear, of failure, to name just a few. If you listen to these voices long enough, they will put a, an image inside of you that is not your own. You need to be able to distinguish the difference between truth and fact. There may be facts in your past that are dark, but that doesn't necessarily mean that those actions tell the truth about who you are today. Who are you really? You may be so clouded with negativity that you really don't know. So I ask again, who are you? You need to take some time to discover yourself. You might be nice and surprised. Mark Twain said, the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. Number three, develop an attitude of gratitude. When you have a thankful heart, you don't have as much time to entertain the woes of everything that is going wrong. You begin to realize that there are some things that are going right. People who express gratitude are more optimistic, less materialistic, more spiritual, less self-centered, and have more self-esteem. Some people keep a gratitude journal. I generally wake up in the morning and just thank God for the blessings that he's given me every day. I also pay closer attention to things that I may have taken for granted before. And it also gives me an opportunity to look for the good in an ordinarily bad situation. I hope I have inspired you to keep out the little boxes. Don't let self-pity be that cute little kitten that eases its way into your home. Live a life full of meaning and truth. I hope you dance. Think good things about yourself and have a grateful heart. In the book, Man's Search for Meaning, Victor Frankl wrote, everything can be taken from a man but one thing. The last of the human freedoms, to choose one's attitude in any given situation, to choose one's own way. When we are no longer able to change a situation, we are challenged to change ourselves. Thank you.